Hello everybody and welcome back to the Texas Reloading Room. Today I want to go over with you the disassembly and reassembly process of one of my current favorite firearms and that is the 1851 uh, Navy. Now this is a replica made by Pieta. They have changed the caliber. This is a 44. But I'm going to go ahead and show you how to take this apart and the same process will go for most of the firearms that resemble this. So let's go ahead and get down to the bench and outline what you're going to need. Alright, so obviously first thing you're going to need is the firearm and a small hammer. It doesn't need to be much. Your tool set, make sure these are hollow ground bits. A brass punch and a nipple wrench that is suitable for the size of nipples that are on your cylinder. And I always like to keep a pick just in case I need it. So, the first thing that we are going to do with this is take this, and actually it's on this side. So, your, your bar here will have screws. You don't have to take this one out, but you definitely will need to remove this one. So, pick an appropriately sized bit and make sure it fills the screw head as completely as it can and we'll go ahead and unscrew that screw right there and then when you take that this will just come right off okay so you can set this aside if you want to disassemble this further for cleaning you can and the next thing we're going to do is remove the barrel which is where your pick and your hammer or your punch and your hammer come in and you don't need to hit it hard the reason we're using a brass punch is because we don't want to mar the surface of the firearm so put it right up against this and tap on it lightly should come out like that. It's not going to come out all the way. Um, you don't want it to. Right there is just fine. And the next thing you want to do is go ahead and just pull apart just like that. So here's your barrel assembly and you can set that aside. Alright, next thing, go ahead and put it in half cock just like that and remove your cylinder. Okay. Let's go ahead and take our nipple wrench and this makes it very easy to unscrew these. Okay, just like that you can unscrew them. I'm not going to take them all out because this firearm was just cleaned. So we'll set that aside for now and move on to this. Next thing you want to do, and it doesn't necessarily have to be in a particular order. Usually what I will do is go ahead and take this screw out on the bottom. And once again, I will stress the importance of having the proper screwdriver set because you do not want to mar, mess up the heads of these screws. Not necessarily difficult to find, but they're not always going to be cheap either. You can't just go to the hardware store and buy them. And then take out the two screws on the back next to the hammer. And if you have trouble remembering exactly what goes where, lay them out next to each other or even better yet what you can do is actually put them back in the holes where they go once you take them apart now right here you need to be careful because we are contacting the hammer spring so I always hold it nice and tight just to make sure things don't fly apart 
all right now on this the grips will actually come off from the inside and there you go set that aside as you can see right here here is your hammer strut or your hammer spring what I'm gonna go ahead and do is release the tension off of that spring so we've got our hammer forward and then the next thing we can do is unscrew here here and right here that will take off our trigger guard and the hammer spring housing And you will need to grip this because you don't want to tear a finger when that hammer spring comes loose. Okay, so, all right, there we go. Set that aside. And now this is where all the bits and pieces are at. If you're fine with not taking it down any further than this, I'm all for that. I am going to show you how to completely disassemble this, let's say in case you need to replace a broken part, something in here, okay? Now, what I am going to go ahead and do is remove this screw. And this holds the trigger mechanism in place. Basically, it's what helps reset things. And then these are the screws that hold the pieces in. You've got the trigger. Uh, this is for the trigger itself. This is for one of the trigger components. And this is for the hammer. Um, so go ahead and take the hammer out first. And if you guys get confused by this or for some reason put something in wrong, there are schematics available on the internet. That's what I did. Anytime I buy a new firearm, I look up the schematic. Okay. So, our hammer is loose. Let's go ahead and take the other bits out of the trigger assembly. And this has to come out a very particular way because there's a piece in here that lines up with that channel. And go ahead and put your finger over that because it is it does have a spring. And basically this is what helps the cylinder rotate. This pushes that out and it catches right here. Okay. So this is as far as I disassemble mine and really that's all you should ever have to do unless for some reason you need to replace the uh, hammer spring which this is going to be the tightest screw on the firearm and you don't want to screw that up because I bought this used and someone tried to take it off you can tell because that screw head is messed up they probably used a hardware store screwdriver do not do not do that okay now, let's see if I can get all the pieces in the shot here. That is the entire firearm taken apart. Now, it probably looks like a big pile of mess right now, but don't worry. I'm going to show you how to put it back together, so let's get on with that right now. First thing we're going to reassemble is going to be the components that go in this, all right? So, what we want to do is go ahead and reassemble this. Take your hammer, take your housing, and insert this piece into that channel just like that. And it will try to slip out on you, so just hold it 
very carefully and then seat your hammer screw in and don't tighten your screws all the way just yet just thread them in enough to hold your pieces okay so we got that set up in there alright so the next bit we're gonna go ahead and take this piece right here and insert it into the bottom so watch very closely turn that over and this round hump right there is going to go in the hole to go up into the portion where the cylinder sits and that's actually going to be your cylinder stop okay and that is going to be held in with a, another screw one of these so go ahead and just thread that in there and we're going to take our trigger and it sits on the side, it doesn't sit right in the center so you can see it sits right there and we'll put that in and I know it can be kind of difficult from just a verbal explanation but when you guys get into the guts of this thing you're gonna be able to figure out how they interact you'll feel where they catch and that's what you want and anytime you do a disassembly and a reassembly don't just run right off to the range you want to make sure that you have assembled things correctly alright so once that's in things in there should look just like this okay and the next step to completing the trigger assembly we're gonna take this spring right here and the long end goes towards the trigger it needs to sit on top of that ledge on the trigger just like that and then you take your screw and you'll screw it in place now be very careful starting this screw I suggest not using a screwdriver but if you're careful you can get away with it now screw this one down tight there now before we go any further I want to go ahead and test the function of this make sure it's working correctly so what we can do pull the hammer back you should hear a couple clicks where it sets the trigger now go ahead and make sure that it's not going to have any hammer push off and then squeeze the trigger and make sure the hammer moves freely if it works just like that then you're good go ahead and tighten these screws down alright congratulations we have now completed the main and probably the most difficult part of the process so we'll go ahead and set this aside for now and just you know what while we're at it let's go ahead and grab the pieces of your cylinder so you should have your cylinder itself and six nipples just go ahead and put those back in and tighten them up now anti-seize would be a very good thing to apply to the nipple thread and once you're done with that just set it aside okay so let's go ahead and fit this to this and it can be a little tricky because you're going to have spring pressure fighting you the entire way but it's doable just watch and make sure that your hammer spring does not come back out now if you've taken it off it's not going to be a big deal you can fit it in later but I think it would be more difficult to fit the hammer spring back onto this than it would be to fit the entire assembly like this all right one of the things that I did forget to mention is actually you can leave the hammer spring out and just barely start these back screws go ahead and start one just start it okay and I would recommend starting both of them Alright, it would appear I didn't start that one well enough. Okay. So start both of the screws 
at the back side of the trigger guard and as you can see we've got plenty of space and that will actually allow us to dip it will actually allow us to dip the spring down underneath the hammer and then you can tighten these back up now leave just a tiny bit of slack in them because you still want to have enough movement to situate the front hole for that screw and then you can screw that front screw in be good now make sure you put the right screw and it should not protrude over the top of this because you need smooth motion here for your cylinder okay so now that's two pieces together the next thing we want to do is put these back on there so it's real easy just slide your grip on just like that and then we'll position this here now note this hole right here should line up just like that okay so on this particular one bottom screw first definitely helps and that may be partly due to the fact that the brass is going to be a little bit more flexible than steel but you have to admit it makes this much more beautiful so the next step is going to be reattaching our cylinder so go ahead and put it in half cock and that takes your cylinder stop out of the way and just like that we've got our cylinder back on and then we can put our barrel assembly back in it's really easy now make sure this doesn't go into the bore it needs to go into the hole just below the bore. Just like that. Okay. And now what we can do, you can push that in a little ways, but you're going to need your hammer. So usually I'll take it, lay it down here use my punch again and set that in now when you use a brass punch it may look like it's marring it a little bit but you can usually just take something and wipe it off because it's coming off of your punch it's not coming off of the firearm so everything is good right there we'll go ahead and put our ramrod back in so this goes into the hole down there and then you can set your final screw just like that test for function of that test for function of the firearm It's probably okay to dry fire these without following the hammer down, but I don't. All right. All right, so that's the disassembly and reassembly of the 1851 Pieta replica. I hope you guys learned something from this video. If you have any questions at all, just leave them down in the comments box. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Give me a thumbs up. and. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.